download both Barn Burner and Zingo TV apps in their respective app store on iOS and Android devices. Uh, while you download, please make sure to rate and leave a comment. Both apps are free. Zingo TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire, and Fire TV Sticks. Roku and Roku Six, also on all smart TVs 2016 forward. All right, welcome to Controlled Chaos. My name is Tamara Siobhan. And I'm Warren J. A show where anything can happen within reason. All right, um, it's been a week. Yeah, every week seems to be very eventful in this. Like the, the next decade, I think, is going to be very, very interesting. I mean, I just don't really know. Was, so for anyone that's not in Toronto um, or Ontario, what's happening is that we're uh, in jail. We're in jail. Mm. <laughs> that's basically what this is, right? You can't walk outside after 8 p.m., or Doug Ford's going to personally come and <laughs> punch you in the face. I don't really know what's going on. I, I heard that there wasn't a career for you, but like, and, and, and people, like, I, I was reading a bunch of things about it. It's very unclear how they're supposed to enforce it. Like, the police aren't supposed to, uh, they're not allowed to ask you why you're out after curfew, or you don't have to provide proof that you're like on your way to or from work or something like that. Like it's, it's just pretty confusing. Basically they just want everybody to stay home. And it's kind of like an honor system type of thing is the vibe that I'm getting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's cute. I just, I'm kind of like, I don't really know. Like you don't understand. We need to stop doing this. Um, We all need to stay home. And I was like, I'm sorry, where have you guys been? I've been at home. Yeah. I was at home like way before it was cool to be at home. <laughs> like I've, this is this is literally not affecting my lifestyle at all. Like I've my life just continued the same way as normal except I can't go to certain businesses anymore. Yeah, well I spoke to someone today that was in Vegas and they're like, "Yeah, 25% of everything is open in Vegas. They, they can go anywhere they want for 25% capacity." And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Because I can't even go to winners until 2064. So that's good. I don't know. It's a weird time. Um, (laughs) I don't really care that much at this point anymore. I just feel like anyone that's living in Toronto, anyone that's like holding out hope for things to come back to normal, it's like, maybe you should see if you like your mom again. That's probably where you should move to. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, Montreal's got it really bad. Uh, Montreal has the 8 p.m. Cur- curfew, and uh, some I read a story on CBC that uh, some lady got pulled over, and the officer she had like a lunch bag. She's on her way from work, and he was like asking to search her lunch bag and stuff like that. Like it was what? Like, this became, yeah, somehow this became grounds for a search. It's just some lady on her way from work with a lunch bag. Uh, so it's getting like real, real uh, like the SS is patrolling the streets of Montreal, but Toronto, I don't know. I haven't felt too much of a tightening of the screws yet, but we'll see. Sorry. <laughs> what does he think he's going to find in her lunch bag? A map to the secret villages she's going to go to? Like, what? Do you, what's going to be the lunch bag? <laughs> a banana shaped <laughs> like a gun. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you, where are you going with this sandwich? Who are you going to see? <laughs> it's like, I'm just eating lunch, man. You're forcing me to work because he took away all of our stimulus. <laughs> yeah, it's like a weird toss up between cops that are like trying to do their job but are confused about what they're supposed to be enforcing and not enforcing. And then there's probably those like power trip cops who are just using this to be like a dick to everybody. Uh, and then, yeah, like I, I don't really know exactly. It's probably very case by case dependent on the person. But uh, from what I was reading in Ontario, it's like you you got your rights. You don't have to like show proof of your excuse to be out in the street or something like that they'll just they're supposed to take you out of your word supposed to but you never know i already know someone that's been stopped which is crazy um like yesterday my friend was stopped um granted not the most (laughs) necessary trip but necessary for like people that care about their skin she was going to lush 
she needed to get her soaps and bath bombs for the lockdown. And the officer was like, where are you going? You know, you shouldn't be going to Lush. And it's like, well, what about soap though? That's pretty essential. <laughs> like, do, do I know that I shouldn't be going to Lush? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Yeah, we're just getting micromanaged by the, the cops now. This is pretty insane. They're using military in some places. I've heard that like Nova Scotia and stuff like that. They're forcing people to make, wear masks outside, even if nobody's even around in any kind of distance. Like it's... it's Why? Getting, yeah, I don't know. It's getting really, really heavy, man. It's turning into North Korea over here. Oh my gosh. That's actually terrifying it's actually yeah. terrifying i mean i'm glad that i got my hair done for no reason because now i thought i love how they've just been like this lockdown has been like one of those things where they're like yeah the lockdown's happening but it's ending soon and this lockdown's been ending for like 10 months and every month they're just like mm, just kidding <laughs> and it's like why don't you just tell us it's never ending um that'd be a lot better <laughs> for my yeah. sanity your hair um, looks nice. Thank you. It's uh, a <laughs> the, the color of my hair as labeled on the packaging is vintage rose. Um, which means nothing. It's just that they put a word in front of the color it actually is. I love that about black hair. It's like they they could just be like it's pink, but they're like, no, it's Wonderland pink. Like it has to always be something that's like so over the top. It's not just yeah. blue, right? It's disco blue. Like it's like okay. Dude, just the color is good. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? I had to spend this like hundred bucks on my hair. Extensions are not cheap, okay? When every whenever anyone's like, oh, those are extensions, I was like, if you bought something to extend something on your body that was a hundred dollars, it's yours now. Like mm-hmm. it's yours. Like this is now my hair. I grew this myself in my mind with my money. A hundred dollars? It's a whole thing. Um, and people are just like, why don't you just go natural? I was like, uh, when there's a lockdown, I can't have natural hair. Who's going to do it? Not me. Like, mm. I'm not doing this. I guess no. you don't have that problem because you have, like, nice, luscious, like, hair. But you just need to, what, what do you use? Like, mousse, wax? Uh, I'm using a pomade, actually, right now. It's a pretty decent That's little. so, like, 1999. Do people still use pomade? Oh yeah, I'm retro. I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, we're, it works for like the the slick look. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been using. Oh, that's what it's for, eh? I don't. I never knew what it was for. Yeah. Okay, I I dig it. How's your week been? What have you been doing? You said you're moving, right? Yes, I'm moving. Holy crap, man! So stressful. It's just like being in the middle of a move is like once I'm in the new place, I'm gonna be a lot more sane. But like my mental and physical health are just deteriorating. I'm living in a studio apartment. Like it's just it's too small. A lady below me complains about my footsteps. I've got weights, but I can't lift my weights, so I can't exercise. So I'm so sedentary. I eat dinner at a desk. Like I don't have a table. You know what I mean? Like I just. It, it, there's there's a lot of things that are just like slowly driving me insane so i'm like really yeah. looking forward to moving into this loft and then like actually having space to do what i want so that's gonna be nice but for now i'm just like going a little bit stir crazy dry january got a little wet too went to a birthday party and uh, i feel bad for people who have birthdays in january you know because like it's for solidarity purposes like you got to drink with that person you know like they didn't ask to be worn that way Capricorn season is the worst season. Um, <laughs> but, well, my birthday, you remember, my birthday was literally at the beginning of the second full lockdown. Mm-hmm. It was enforced on my birthday. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, that's cool. So, yeah, the, Doug Ford took that away from me, which is, like, fine. It's not like I was turning, like, a milestone year anyway. But people that have birthdays in January and February, like, in the dead of winter, it's like, I don't know how you guys have been celebrating it all up until now. <laughs> like, what? You think you were going to get me outside in minus 25 degree weather? Like, enjoy. Like, hope you have a good birthday. I'm not coming. Yeah. And, and if it's an outdoor gathering now, it has to be five or less people. <laughs> like, we're, we're not even going to do outdoor gatherings of six people. Just like, okay, so crowds well, don't exist anymore. 
it's not even that it's like you have to you can only meet outside in a gathering of five if you live in a house where you're by yourself and you meet up with someone else that's in a house by themselves so you can have the social interaction so you don't go crazy but then you can go home and feel like you have the flu and then think you have covid then get depressed find out you don't have covid but then by the time you find out you don't have covid you might already have gotten covid it's a whole thing <laughs> yeah and like aren't, aren't the flu numbers like way way down like way less people are getting the flu which could mean two things could mean people are taking all these different precautions to avoid covid and so the flu numbers are down or that flu cases are being like somehow misdiagnosed as covid 19 cases because there's been like a huge spike like i don't even know anymore when i look at the numbers i'm just like okay like i don't nobody around me is sick nobody i know has covid like it doesn't feel like it's happening but apparently it's out of control um, my brother has COVID right now. Um, oh. and that's really crazy. And cause we, it, we found out in a really weird way, but he's in Jamaica and he got COVID in Jamaica from doing like a drop off for materials for someone. And that person made them, made him food. And from that person, he got COVID mm. and he was so ill that he couldn't even pick up the phone and start ringing. Like he couldn't stretch his arm out to even pick up a phone call which is like yeah he's like i saw you calling i saw you guys calling but i couldn't physically move to answer the phone really like whereas another person i know had covid was like sniffling for a day so it really just depends on like who you are which Mm -hmm. i guess is like the severity of the whole thing but i mean I just don't like they were talking today about how they might close the <laughs> they might actually think about <laughs> shutting down international travel. I was like, sorry, that wasn't done yet. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Oh, there are God. like 30 people I know in Mexico right now. They're like living the dream. These people are like traveling, like, oh, I guess I can't do anything here. So I'm like in the Dominican and I'm like, isn't this how this is spreading? Like, what is happening? Like, yeah. I can't waste this hair, Warren. I cannot waste this hair. <laughs> well, vacations are mad cheap right now. I was looking at some of the deals. I'm, like, hoping to get, like, maybe April or something like that, get to take off for a bit. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, it, it, I'm frugal, you know? And, like, I'm, I'm a risk taker. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I feel like I'll probably be fine. I do all the right things. Like, I take, like, a vitamin D and, like, all the different, like, there's a lot of supplementation you can take that'll, you know, protect you and your immune system against COVID. Like, so I've I've been reading up on it and I do everything that I can and I come in very minimal contact with people. It's not like when I go on vacation, I'm going to like hug a bunch of strangers in a foreign country. Like I'm going to be just like, I'm here. I'm going to be like, stay the hell away from me. Like, what do you want? Right. Like, well, yeah, for sure. Like that's the whole thing. I mean, there's a thing, there's an app right now, which is really funny. There's an app right now where you can like type in like your, I don't know your social insurance and like your name and date of birth and it's they can tell you when you will be able to get your vaccine and so my friend did that I personally am like I'll get the vaccine when I get the vaccine like I I apparently I'm next in line to get the vaccine because of being a teacher which is like <laughs> sick uh <laughs> like you're not gonna go out of my way to like beg for it but yeah i'll take it for free for sure um but um in that whole case it's just kind of like it's very weird to me that they're creating a vaccine for something they can't tell us fully is what it fully is yet like mm, six feet or ten feet we're not really sure uh sneezing or breathing not really sure but this vaccine's ready to go i'm like okay um but, but um she typed in all of her information and uh yeah you know how many people are before her in line before she gets her vaccine? How many 22 million. 22 million. 22 million? People. This is like a Do worldwide vaccine like distribution list? Canada. Canada? 22 million? <laughs> oh, holy crap. Just really? Canada. So like you have to go and register and they're like, that's how many people are already in the queue? Yeah. Oh, wow. 22 million people are going to get their vaccine before her. She's not scheduled to have hers until October. Hmm. So I'm like, well, if everyone else gets their vaccine, then maybe I'll just (laughs) see how that goes. (laughs) 
Yeah, I'm going to feel a lot safer when 22 million people have been vaccinated before me. It's like they don't have COVID, right? Like, I don't I don't have COVID. So, like, I'm the last one. I'm the survivor. I'm like Tom Hanks on the island, you know, <laughs> talking to a, a volleyball. Just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, COVID is that, our Wilson. It's just going to yeah. float away and never come back. That's it. Wilson! <laughs> Oh, man. Um, I forgot about that movie, actually. I mean, I've been watching... Um, <laughs> I don't know what you've been doing in the past of the time, but I've been watching really, really interesting shows on Netflix. Netflix in itself, super garbage right now. And they must know it, right? They mm. must know that we're done watching everything. Like, hi, Netflix. I'm finished. Do you have some new tasks? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I started watching... The Queen's Gambit. Oh, how is that? Um, which is actually very good. It's really good. It's really, really good. I just stopped myself because I only have two episodes left. I really love it so much. I also really love, there's like one scene where this, where she's pretending she can't speak Spanish and she's like, do cervezas, dos cervezas, por favor. Then I looked her up and she's a full Spanish speaking person and they just made her look super white. So I was like, oh man, that is acting. Um, <laughs> And then I've been watching Bridgerton, which is pissing me off. Have you heard about this? What is it? Bridgerton, it's like back in the day, very like elite families, but like the most elite families, like this like black family. And it's supposed to be this like kind of switch, like role reversal where you get to see like things from a different perspective. But this guy is just like the worst. He's triggering me. He's triggering mm -hmm. me. And he's like, um, <laughs> he won't marry this chick but he's like into her fully and it's just like stringing her along the whole time it's like and i saw so many funny memes about it being like this guy is like the like 1812 f boy like this is the this is the person that he is this is like <laughs> this is what f boys were in this time yeah, so yeah. Like, I, I respect you too much therefore i cannot marry you but, but i can just eat you out like you know what i mean it's just like, so <laughs> yeah Oh boy. So I'm like, I'm like, oh man, maybe that's why everything's close. It's like a nice reflection period for me to remember the fact that like these guys still exist. <laughs> like I can't. Um, so I've been watching mm -hmm. that. It's been frustrating. And um, what are you are you watching anything on Netflix? Do you have Netflix? Uh, I do have Netflix. Um, I started watching some show, it was like surviving death. It's about people who have like near death experiences and oh my this, gosh, like, I've soul. seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Souls leaving the body and all of that stuff. Because I'm like, I'm a pretty spiritual guy. I'm into like all this occult type of stuff. Like, I believe that we're a soul inside a meat suit on this planet and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. They they go into a lot of that type of uh, you know, the uh the what people experience when they transcend to this higher dimension and they can like see their dead body on the operating table but then they come back into it because they weren't ready to die or whatever like it's pretty cool that's crazy actually mm -hmm. i think i'm thinking of a different i think i'm thinking of a different show that's just kind of like uh oh like oh it's a <laughs> it's a show called like i survived where like they almost actually did die but that oh that's the same thing i guess there are a lot of shows like that um yeah. but have you seen naked died. attraction though uh no but I, I i think i might be able to figure out what it's about is this just like a dating show where people are naked yeah but the way that people are naked is that they have like everyone's in like little pods and they start lifting the pod like screen up um from the bottom up so you see like their genitalia first and then like their midriff and then they're like upper part here and then like in the whole time they're like they're analyzing their bodies and deciding if they like them based on their bodies and they don't even get to speak until the third round where they ask, they answer like two questions and then they find try to figure out like you know who they like the most without ever seeing their faces and only seeing their bodies first and then they mm -hmm. go on a date and they usually all go horribly but the thing about the show is that when they're actually done and like they choose the person or when people get kicked off the show they like spin them around and like do this whole thing and they show their regular clothes and they look terrible. It's like, oh my gosh, these people actually do look better naked. Because um, when they put their clothes on, it's like they can't dress themselves. You need to watch it. Yeah, okay. Is this Netflix? 
I'll give you my Hey You login. It's, an, it's on Hey You. Oh, Hey You? Okay, nice. nice. I will give you my Hey You login. You need to watch it. Like, I'm so okay. into it. And you start guessing <laughs> who they're going to pick. It's like, this is like my pastime now. This is this is who I am now. Sweet, sweet. All right, I'll check that out. Um, okay, uh, so we're coming up to the next section of the show here. We got topics from a hat. Topics got from a hat. hat. Topics, and here we go. Oh, revenge. Oh, boy. Oh, man. The revenge. Served cold. Like, you got yeah, like, you know what? I'm a generally petty person. Um, proudly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try- I'm trying to think of the worst story. Do you want to go first? And then I'm going to think of which one I want to tell for sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a professionally petty person. Like I said, that like that was the one thing I liked about Donald Trump was how petty he was. And like, I was just like, okay, this is for some reason, I find this part of him relatable is pettiness. Petty is just like, I don't know, it's a way of life. You know what I mean? Like, there's just there's something that I don't know, it speaks to me. It speaks to my soul. So, uh, yes, revenge is a very, very enjoyable thing. Um, I got one story. <laughs> this is a good one. So back when I lived in B.C., um, Let's see here. Uh, I was invited to a party. And now this party was being hosted by a guy. I was invited by these girls that I knew. And they're like, come to this guy at Kiefer's party. Right. Now, mm-hmm. Kiefer didn't invite me to the party. The girls did. And so I was like, okay, is it cool if I come? And they're like, yeah, sure. Um, but I didn't talk to the guy. And then, I, I don't know. Apparently, I don't think the guy wanted me to come. He didn't know me. We had never met. But. For some reason, he just, I don't know, he was he just didn't want me at his party for some stupid reason. Anyway, me and my, my, bro- my brother and some other friends end up going and my brother's girlfriend ends up going. And uh, there's another petty side story to this story. So earlier that day, my brother's girlfriend at the time, we were all living together in an apartment. They had a, um, not a French bulldog, a Boston Terrier. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Yeah, I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I sound, I sound, I'm, I'm losing it. But anyway, they had this like uh, a little one of those little grass pads that the dog could like pee and poop on. And they kept it on the balcony. And so the dog would go and it would go out there. They wouldn't like take it out enough. Now, I was paying to live there. And so was my brother. And so was my other roommate. And this girl just kind of moved in with him. And she wasn't paying at all. And she would make a mess, and like she was just spoiled brat, didn't clean up anything, very unappreciative, just very sense of entitlement to her, right? So this dog pad got covered in crap to the point that we would get letters from the neighbors that were like, um, there are feces on the uncovered portion of the balcony. Like somebody looked down from their balcony to ours and saw this little grass pad covered in dog crap. And like, we're still getting these like embarrassing complaints on, on this place that we're in. Like it was, it was humiliating. So what we did, my, uh, the other roommate, myself, one day my brother was out, his girlfriend was napping in bed and uh, we took the little pad, we walked into her room and then we just threw it on the bed where she was sleeping. And so, the, no. all this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, so the little pad with the dog craps and everything like that, we're like, there, you're going to clean it now, right? Because we had asked several times and she just didn't do it. So this was kind of the build up to where the tension started. Now, later this evening, we're both at the party. My brother's there. I'm there. A bunch of other people that we know are there. And uh, the girl's like, you know, she's pissed off about what happened earlier. And uh, she starts whispering in my brother's ear, starts winding him up or whatever, like trying to get him, trying to sick him on me, right? My brother's younger than me, but he's bigger than me, right? Like he could take me in a fight. So, um, and we, we didn't get into too many fights, but we, we got into a few little scuffles and usually he would win. So basically uh, she, you know, said something to him and then he got in my face. And then we, me and my brother ended up getting in a fist fight in this party this Kiefer kid's house and the guy didn't even want me at his party to begin with and everyone's like who's fighting it's like it's 
the brothers. <laughs> like, like these guys are just fighting each other at the party. And so he was pretty pissed off. And then anyway, that kind of the smoke cleared and everything like that. The situation calmed down. I was just like, dude, like you didn't clean up the mess. Like we, we just kind of cooled it down a bit. And then uh, after that, I was talking to a girl that I knew and, you know, her and I were hitting it off. We were going to go home and go back to my place. So I call a cab because we didn't have Ubers back then. Right. So this was yeah. a taxi about to leave the party. And then the girl goes back inside to tell her friends and stuff that she's leaving. And she tells Kiefer that she's about to leave and go home with me. And then she doesn't come out, but Kiefer comes out as the cab arrives. And he's like, oh, hey, man, uh, she's not leaving with you. She's staying here. Like the guy just like completely like just blocked me like, yo, bro, like, yeah, she, she's not going to come. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, she was totally down. Like, it just, it made absolutely no sense. But for whatever reason, this guy just didn't like me, uh, probably because I wasn't invited and I got into a fight at his party. And so he tried to sabotage the sex that I was about to have with this girl by convincing her not to leave with me. And so like the cab's waiting. I'm not going to run into the house, go try and talk to her. I'm like, okay, whatever, I guess you know i'm gonna have to leave alone so i went home alone now that's part one a couple of months later there was another party no <laughs> at this party i met a girl named aaron we were chatting you know we hit it off and everything like that it was cool um she was nice um uh, you know pretty much talking to each other the entire night we exchanged phone numbers and um then i left that party and that was the end of that we kept in touch, texted a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm telling my buddy, I'm like, oh, yeah, I met this girl here at this party. And somebody's like, oh, that's uh, that's Kiefer's girlfriend, that that Aaron girl. And I'm like, really? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. You know where this is going. <laughs> so me being the uh, the jerk that I am decided, OK, well, since you cost me one night of sex and that should have happened and you were a jerk and you talked somebody out of it and for no reason you just didn't like me he never even met me he didn't even give me a chance so uh one night i had that girl over we're hanging out drinking some tequila whatever in my place we hook up and then that was that i hooked up with Kiefer's girlfriend and he had no idea ever still to this day might not have any idea no there, there may be people that know us that are watching this that might know all of us and then they're gonna find out and maybe they'll tell them so <laughs> this is one of those revenge is a dish best served way after its ex expiry date moments um yeah <laughs> Kiefer, from what you did it was very rude i i did i apologize for the scene that i caused at your party but I decided that I needed to take a pound of flesh for what you did to me. And so I hooked up with Aaron while you guys were going out. And that's my revenge story. Yo, maybe we should just like forward this to Kiefer. This is Abracadabra. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Um, uh, what's your yeah. sign? You're a Gemini? You're... No, Libra. Libra. Yeah, see, the thing is, Libras are really, uh, they're really nice people, but don't take their attention away. They, that's, they need that. Yeah. You know, I was, I was having a moment. It was like, it was totally cool. We're in and off. We're going to go hook up. All of a sudden, this guy is just like, oh, no, bro. She's not coming with the league. He just, he just had a, a hard on for me, wanted to take his anger out on me. So I'm like, all right, dude, fine. Then opportunity comes along. I meet his girlfriend. She's into me. And I'm like, well, sorry, bro. But uh, I'm going to get that point on the board one way or the other. And now it's going to be your girl instead of that girl. Wow. That's what it is. That's what um, it is, boy. Bra, bra. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, my story actually does have layers, kind of like yours, for sure. Um, and this is why we're friends, I'm assuming. <laughs> so I started dating this guy when I was living in Alberta. We were, like, really close, had a really good... Um, like relationship I guess that we were forming and he was like calling me every day even though we were like I was back in Ontario he was still out in um, Alberta then in BC and then had to move away to another place and I was like okay cool like we're still keeping in touch everything's going really well um 
to the point where we book a trip to Jamaica. We book a trip to Jamaica. It's like me, him, and like his best friend, um, mm-hmm. who becomes my best friend, and we're all hanging out all the time. We book a trip to Jamaica. Everything's like crazy. Like it's the first time I brought someone out there. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna bring this guy out. Like I'm so into this person. Like whatever. So I start. We meet up in Jamaica, which is like a really crazy story about how we met up in Jamaica because like I somehow flew to the country without a passport. I just called like the travel board. I got them to like make accommodations based on my family, like history and my family name. Like my family has a lot of like pull and Jamaica. It was like insane. So mm-hmm. like he was like, How do you get here without a passport? I was like, I just called the travel board. It was like, it's me. And they're like, Oh, okay. So I flew to Jamaica, like with like a license, which is insane. Um <laughs> But anyway, I get there and we had decided that I'm going to move to where he was living in the summer. So we're going to leave Jamaica after everything was done. Um, And then we were going to, he was going to go and move to where he was moving first. And then I was going to move to meet up with him in Banff, right? So we were both going to meet up in Banff. And then I was going to get the same job. So I applied for this job. I used him as the reference for it because he already has a job. We're setting everything up everything's good he meets my whole family in jamaica we're spending so much time together and i'm like this guy's the guy i'm gonna marry we almost get married in jamaica like in this like whole like we're drunk we're like should we just do it like tie the knot out here like this is how like crazy i am also like i've almost gotten married to too many people and i'm aware of that um (laughs) (laughs) me too (laughs) (laughs) impulse you know stuff right you're just like i'm in love the two months Mm -hmm. later like no um so then I get a really sick job. When I get home, I get a really sick job to work where I worked before in a different location. And it's like, this is going to be the best job. Like, I'm going to make so much money, more money than before. Someone's gotten me the job, gotten me in, and it's paying me way more money. And it's a better position than the one I was going to have in Banff. So we have this whole conversation. I'm like, yo, I think I'm going to go and take this other job. He's like, oh, that's really shitty. That sucks. Like, I wanted to live with you and like do this. And I was like, yeah, I know. But like, I don't know. I'm going to come and visit you before I go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Alberta. I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm going to come see you in Banff and then go all the way across and go to Waterton Lakes Mm. National Park, which is like the opposite direction. So he's like, okay, cool. Like, fine, let's do it. As I'm getting there, (coughs) I'm going with the person that I'm going to be rooming with in Waterton. I get off the plane and I get a text message from one of our mutual friends. And she's like, I hate to break this to you. I just found out that this guy has had another girlfriend for the past month. Oh. And he is fully involved. Like they're fully together. Like they're together. Like they're dating. <laughs> wow. And I already have like my bus ticket to go see him. I'm like, how is he going to pull this off? So I go there he's like not even really breaking it i'm like hey like chilling like whatever trying to be like normal he's oh so happy to see you blah 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 not knowing that as i'm in the room the other girl's in the room too and he's just like playing it cool with like both of us i'm like oh so you're trash Mm -hmm. so then i find out that this is this girl so i'm like oh yeah eh? okay so then i start just being like so what's going on like i hear that you have met somebody else like oh no like you know like it's not that serious he's like trying to lie about it and that's what really starts to piss me off so I'm like okay all right so I'm like all right we go we go hang out he's still lying to me he's still trying to be all like cute and stuff and (laughs) I'm like all right let's see what goes on we go out for the night I leave I see him like all over this girl he has doesn't even have the decency to be like hey we need to talk about this I go back to where he's staying I rob him I steal all of his clothes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all, all of his favorite sweaters all of the ones he loved the most and I get immediately on a greyhound to my job like literally so then he has no clothing left he starts messaging he starts messaging me like where's all my clothing I was like that's what you get when you pull this kind of stuff with me still like and honestly still have some of the sweaters like really nice then started dating his best friend Ruined their friendship. Now you have no one to talk to. You think I'm playing games? (laughs) 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 Savage. We we start dating. 
to the point where it's like so over the top mm. so over the top we're like fully together we won't we won't speak he's trying to make amends he's like please can we like just try to talk like i know i didn't do this the right way let's plan like a like little trip where you get to know her a little bit more and i was like yeah for sure make him plan this whole trip uh, make him rent a car bail i literally like went through so many levels to be like you think this is a game like it's not <laughs> Uh, we are friends now, but we didn't speak really? for like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are friends now. Um, and like, I'm really like, I really love his wife. They're married. That's the thing though. Here's the thing. If you're going to cheat on me and you're going to get a whole new girlfriend and lie about it, you better marry this girl. And he did. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's, that, that, that's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Like they got married. We like me and Ivan, like we still hang, we hang with them now. Like it's cool. But in the heat of the whole moment, I was like seeing red. I was like, no, that, like I have no, no, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, I'm not even going to try to pretend that I'm going to be cool about this because like, I'm just like the pettiest person. Like I'll find everything that hurts you. I've been trying to get mm -hmm. better about that because uh, you know, people are petty and like want attention so mm. when people are petty and want attention, you, I don't want to give it to them. But when people are petty and they're stupid, then I'll let them know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, some people, you know, it's like people deserve to know when they've done something dumb. That's what revenge, like revenge can be, it can be petty or sometimes it's like, it's justice, right? Like someone just did you wrong out of nowhere. Like they didn't have any reason to do it and like, you know, they just whatever. Okay, so like, then there you go. You just give them a little, little bitch slap and let them know that that wasn't okay. Yeah, I am starting to realize that I'm like really hard to date. Like, I get it. Like, I'm crazy. <laughs> um, but like, isn't that fun? Yeah, it's like an event. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a new challenge. They got to figure out what's going on with you today. Oh man. Um, so yeah, whatever. Like we're all good now. Um, that's a good thing. Like I have a lot of revenge in me, but like once I've proven my point, I do get over it. Yeah. I or, or maybe I don't because I'm telling the story right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty good. I mean, like for, for me, it was like once I'd gotten that out of my system, every time I would see this guy, like every now and then we'd see each other at a party, I'd just be like super friendly to him, right? I'd be like, oh keeper, hey, what's up, buddy? Like just like the friendliest, shoot him a big smile, like I know something you don't know, type of thing, right? Like yeah. I I still don't think he has any idea that this ever happened. So it's gonna be hilarious if a word gets back to him because you know it's uh it is what it is man it was maybe a little bit petty but you should have just given me a chance i didn't i wasn't the one who threw the first punch in the fight i wanted to come to your party and just have fun happened to be my brother was dating a piece of trash and she left dog turds on the thing there was a pre-existing problem and it blew up at your place like you know i'm sorry but uh yeah, yeah it was just he, he, even before any of that happened it was like, I got the vibe, like, this guy really didn't want me to come, and the girls were just like, no, no, just come, it'll be fine. So, like, I don't know why he didn't like me. He never even met me. So, that, that's yeah. it, you know? It's like, if you want to prejudge me, think I'm an asshole, I'm just going to embody whatever you think that I am. And, yep. yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, don't don't tempt me with a good time to prove you right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'll, you, you want to make me the bad guy? I'll be the bad guy. I'm not going to enjoy doing it. And I'm going to be extra bad just because you made me play that role. Right? It's, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. Basically, this is all your fault that this happened. Like, you should be mad at yourself. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. Okay, I think it's time for us to move on to our next segment. Everyone's favorite segment. Whose headline is it anyway? Oh, yes. Yeah, some good ones this week. Uh, you want to go first? I picked one that I thought that you would really like, and then I picked one that I thought was just really stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, both of these I had you in mind for when I chose them, so. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, <laughs> wait till you hear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first one. A man injected himself with magic mushrooms and the fungi grew in his blood, which put him into organ failure. I heard about this. This is insane. <laughs> Who, why do you need to do that? Like, what's, there's just, like, I don't get it. 
you're just are the shrooms not enough like i don't really yeah. inject them <coughs> I don't know what he was thinking. Like, did he? So, did he inject? Because I didn't like read the details of the story. Was it like ground up mushrooms and he injected it to try and get high, or was it like he injected mushroom spores? Because I heard that they started like growing in his body and it killed him. So yeah, so basically, he was thirty, a thirty-year-old guy with bipolar disorder. So I guess okay. he was trying to feel like better. So he injects mm -hmm. himself with the magic mushrooms, um, in a failed attempt at a trip. He was trying to trip out but like in a happy way which i was like just eat them um yeah. so, so they say here psychedelic mushrooms are meant to be eaten or drunk not injected so the mushrooms grew in the man's bloodstream and caused his body to go into organ failure he's being treated with long-term use of antifungals and antibiotics so how crazy is this of course this happens in nebraska because like what happens out there like nebraska just like have you ever been to omaha like sorry for anyone that's from nebraska like i'm sure you're lovely um but this is some nebraska stuff right here you know what i mean like i'm not surprised but mm -hmm. the unfortunate thing is that he was he's bipolar so it's like during this time and during all these things that are happening it's like obviously a lot of people's mental health is being strongly like affected but yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, if you've never heard about anyone doing it, maybe don't try to be the first. Yeah, like, I don't know why you would necessarily think that that was the method of administration for this particular substance when no one's doing it that way. That just seems very desperate. Like, he must have been shooting other stuff to be that comfortable that he's just like, oh, I'm going to mainline some shrooms. Like, that's, uh, oof. That's yeah, insane. like the little shrooms started growing like in his body, like the fungus started growing in his body. Oh god. Which is like I'm still trying to get over like how my period works, so I can't even fathom how that all walk like how that all figures itself out <laughs> in your body. Can yeah. you imagine your body being like, well, what is happening? <laughs> like, yeah, why are we you... growing mushrooms in your blood? <laughs> You've inoculated your bloodstream, and now it is the substrate for the mushrooms to grow in. You are a mushroom farm, and now you're dead. Wow. Well, that's like, so he he was in, he's not dead. Oh, he's not dead. He lived? No. Oh, badass. Lived to tell the tale. <laughs> he's he's yeah, the so one he guy was... in the world who did that. Then. All right. I, I thought he had died. I was like, oh, man, that's like horrible. But all right. We can laugh at it. He's alive. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not dead. He was in the hospital for three weeks. And, um, <laughs> But, like, hold on. He boiled the mushrooms in water and then filtered the liquid through a cotton swab and then in injected the substance into his bloodstream. So I don't even understand how that works. It sounds and like so how, you, how you would do, like, heroin, you know? You see people with a spoon that's got a little cotton thing, and it, like, it's, except instead of heroin powder, it's, like, mushroom dust, and he tried to do it, the same thing. Like, yeah. I, I wonder if he was using heroin before. Like, that sounds like something that somebody who's never injected something wouldn't just go right to that. You know what I mean? Like, he's been there before, for sure. Yeah. Like, exactly. It's like, you don't, like, you don't start doing a little bit of, like, Lino's and then decide that you just want to, like, light it up and see what crack is unless you've smoked before. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, if you're looking for something more extreme, just, like, try sticking it up your butt and, and see what happens there. Just boof it, right? Like, that's a, that's a little different. Might uh, might not be the same. <laughs> it'll it'll hit a little different if you put it up that way, but I don't know, man. It's putting stuff in a needle and shooting it's pretty dicey, even if it's injectable. It's not safe to do that. So, ugh, yikes. Yeah. It's why. What, what do you yeah. got this week? Uh... <laughs> Well, there's one here. Uh, there's a uh, man who forgot Bitcoin password accepts fate. So I guess no. I've heard a few stories like this. Yeah. Stefan Thomas of San Francisco says he had made peace with forgetting his Bitcoin password that would turn him into a multimillionaire. Thomas, who was recently featured in the New York Times, has about $220, or excuse me, <clears throat> $220 million worth of Bitcoin locked away in a hard drive that will erase its data after 10 password attempts he's tried to put the correct password eight times with no luck german-born programmer lost the piece of paper containing the password 
so he says, you sort of question your self-worth. What kind of person loses something this important? Thomas said during an interview with, uh, before detailing how he's come to terms with what happened. It was actually a real big milestone in my life where like, I sort of realized I was going to define my self-worth going forward. I wasn't going to be about how much money I have in my bank account, he said. He told this story to prevent others from forgetting their passwords. Boy, 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 someone had a case on the Mondays. That man must feel very silly. Yo, I would not even be able to muster the words to speak to any publication if something like this happened to me. Are you out of your mind? How yeah. much? $220 million? Yeah, $220 million. Yeah, it sounds like he went to the press. Like, how would anybody know unless he, like, made a public declaration? Oh, I lost all this money. Like, he's still got two password attempts, but he doesn't know what the hell his password is. So, like, that's a little dicey. That's $220 also, million. Also, how is there no way around this? Uh, it's just, if it's, if Bitcoin is being kept in like a cold storage, like a hard wallet, it's like a USB drive. You got to enter a certain amount of passwords. There's like all of these, uh, you know, like a hidden key or private key or whatever. Like it's, it's pretty complicated stuff, right. To break into, cause you're not giving your money in a bank. So it has to be very, very secure. And, uh, I guess if you have bad memory, like I do, I can picture myself doing something like that. So I don't have any Bitcoin. Like I want to get into Bitcoin. Seems like it's going somewhere, but at the same time, I totally can picture myself being this guy. So I'm a little worried about it. Do you know how many places I would have that path? First of all, putting it on one thing ever is insane to me that you would just be like, shouldn't be good. Like, I don't, I take pictures of my lottery tickets. Like, are you crazy? Like, no. Um, Mm. I like, but just putting it in one place and then just being like crumpling it up and putting it in your pocket, it's like, you deserve this. Like, I don't even feel bad for you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe he tried to memorize all of the passwords because I think some of them have like 26 words that you got to remember and you got to enter them each in sequence and all of this stuff to be able to enter the, the thing to unlock your funds. So he might have had it written down on a piece of paper and then tried to memorize it and threw it away and then forgot it. Or I don't know, it doesn't really mention the details of how that happened. But uh, this man must feel like a very silly goose. Imagine he's like collecting like Serb checks. Or like he's on like not even serve. It's like those six hundred dollars stimulus checks. Mitch McConnell's just dick teasing him with money, and he's like, "Oh man, twenty two million worth of Bitcoin. I can't even get it." Woof. I I can't imagine. I I honestly, dude, the bank will hold my money, and I'm like, I rate and going on like a war path. You think I'm gonna just like not like I? I can't believe this guy's like giving an interview. Like, I actually can't believe it. I know. I would just like bury my head in the sand. Like, I don't know what, why you would want to publicity. you like, first of all, you feel like the biggest idiot in the world. And now you're going to publicly announce for that. Everyone else can validate that you are indeed the biggest idiot in the world. That's, oh God, what a poor, poor guy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Lost the piece of paper containing the password. It says, so. Like, you, know? you don't like, dude, that's a notepad in your bedroom, like in a drawer situation. It's not a piece of paper that you put in your jean pocket. Like, what do you think this is? I don't even put a five dollar bill in like my pocket just to p- potentially lose. I don't yeah. feel bad for him. I don't feel yeah. bad for him. That's that's your problem. But, yeah, not like, really. He, he probably bought them when they were super cheap, too. Like, he probably just had like 7,000 bitcoins, like way back in, you know, like when they were 200 bucks or something like that. And then he just held on to them and now he can't access them. So, like, it's not like he's out. It's just the opportunity cost of having 220 million if you weren't a forgetful moron. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that that's the part that kind of stinks a little bit, I think. Um, yeah. So you'll love this one because I feel like this might be your neighbor that wrote this. Okay. Um, <laughs> woman's epic reply to neighbor's note telling her to stop screaming during sex. <laughs> <laughs> a Twitter user explained that after a night with her partner, she received an angry note from one of her neighbors who asked her to stop screaming like a pig. <laughs> like a pig? <laughs> a pig. They squeal. So, they don't scream. That's so well, weird. I love that that's the well. she, get, <laughs> she get plowed like, who <laughs> <laughs> knows? It must be in Nebraska. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska, we're sorry. Honestly, <laughs> like, just, you know, be better. Um, so the yeah. woman, 
<laughs> the woman from the UK, so not Nebraska, oh, but the, okay. the Nebraska of Europe, um, <laughs> 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 who goes under the screen name, and they put her screen name here, if anyone wants to look it up, at Sharp by Name 8, explained that after a night of passion, she received an angry note from one of her neighbors. Sharing a picture of the handwritten letter to Twitter, it read, can you please stop screaming like a pig at daft o'clock when you're shagging? <laughs> we are we are all sick of it. <laughs> Seeing the funny side of things, she captioned the snap. I personally thought I sounded like an herbal essence woman, but go off, I guess. <laughs> so that that's a throwback to um herbal essences. Remember that commercial that they just let kids watch? That's so funny. Oh, uh, the girl where she's like orgasming while she's <laughs> lathering her hair and everyone's like what's going on in there and she just comes out and she's like oh that shampoo was amazing like yeah that. yeah well you know what's funny too is like they're like we're all sick of it they're like I, I wonder if that was actually like a bunch of neighbors got together and talked about it and then one the most passive aggressive the most aggressive of the passive aggressive ones wrote the note or if somebody was just like bluffing as if like everybody's pissed off just so they could like really drive the point home you know i want like a, i want like a team like neighborhood meeting like i want that to be like all right okay cool so we're gonna put signs up yeah we're gonna have green bins and can we just talk about this pig sound <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that, that yeah yeah the uh the, like the strata council meeting it's like in the minutes you know they're complaining <laughs> about <laughs> people having sex i i had a note from like b before the footsteps note i had a note back in 2019 summer when i was just like whoring around with everybody uh whereas like we can hear everything everything was like all caps underlined exclamation point like please try to keep it down during the night time and like because i was just like i was getting the business man literally the doorman the security guard in my building saw me bring five different girls home in one week and like on, but the fifth one he's just looking at me like dude do you even have a job like what are you doing like he's just like, <laughs> shaking his head like bro calm down <laughs> but yeah we're just blasting deep sexy house just yo yeah, yeah. Give deep, them the deep house is deep house is the way to go honestly it is it's a good tempo for having sex it's just like you know like it keeps you on the rhythm you know uh, that's uh, that's my go-to deep sexy house playlist on spotify solid jams <laughs> spotify oh man no it's um that's so funny i <laughs> yeah so i don't know i mean that's the best i feel like i tried with harry styles once and that didn't work out very well um mm -hmm. harry styles is not even though the, the videos look good um they're not actually as great as you think mm, okay interesting well I'm, yeah uh, you can't like you can't get down to watermelon sugar high <laughs> no no have you ever like don't try it no no i uh, uh okay well anyway um uh, we are uh, coming up to the end of the show here so i guess uh i guess that'll be it uh this show can be heard on the barn burner radio network on its 122 platforms please check out barnburner.ca for all the news and programming that is barn burner watch it hear it read it download it live it live it everybody you can find me on instagram and twitter at warren j comedy and tamara at t bear peace out everybody. All right.